Hi there, I hope you're having a great day so far. But there's no doubt that the world is going through a really challenging time at the moment. But through the most difficult times in our lives, we experience growth, whether we like it or not. And the reason for this is that we have to adapt to new situations and scenarios that we hadn't before. And in order to get through these tough times and when the world as we know it has changed around us, um, sometimes and invariably we have to change something within us. And although that we try to protect our children from all of these outside uh, changes, um, we can also use them as a great opportunity to teach our children valuable life lessons. So our current situation is a perfect example of this. And lucky for us today, we are joined by Zanny Louise, who's going to talk through a few of these valuable life lessons that we can actually choose to teach our kids. Now, Zanny Louise is the author of 12 children books and the author of the Humankind series. Zanny's books are sold internationally and have been long listed in the CBCA awards. Now she tours Australia, she visits schools, festivals, and runs a whole heap of workshops for for adults and we're really really grateful for her time thank you for joining us Annie how are you yeah I'm good thanks Rachel thanks for having me yes once again we're really really honored and really at the moment with everything that we're going through and as I've just said in my introduction if there ever was a time to teach kids some lifelong lessons it it would be now um, what are your thoughts on this well, definitely. And I guess um, to help kids cope and be resilient in times of difficulty, we want them to feel secure. We want them to feel safe. And I guess we want um, them to have a strong sense of themselves. Um, so that's what my series Humankind is all about. It's all about helping kids understand who they are not just for themselves, but also in relation to other people. So their friends and their family and their society at large. And what I think underpins all of that is values. So um, we talk about values like honesty and integrity and things like that. Um, they're kind of abstract words that are thrown around. And I know they're a lot used a lot in education, uh, a lot of primary schools and preschools run their education program based on values rather than achievement outcomes. Um, but I really wanted to understand what uh, those particular values were, you know, what is honesty, what is persistence and really think about it in relation to children. Um, yeah, so I think it is really important to uh, build connections with our children and also to give them tools for understanding who they are and you know how the society works i suppose and now is a really good time for that because a we've got the time to spend with our children but b uh, we also want our kids to feel safe resilient and secure yeah and uh, i mean we're going to speak through um the details individually of what these values are um and and the important messages that they that they teach um but um in saying that um i mean i'd love to be able to know from from your perspective i know that when you were developing this this the series um you spoke to children directly what did you learn from them when you when you got to sort of interview and speak to them hmm so uh, it was a really interesting process because yeah, when I first sat down to write these books, I thought, well, I know what honesty means to me. And actually, the more I thought about it, the more kind of confused I became because I thought, well, sometimes you're honest in this situation, but not in this situation. And you know, it's a really complex sort of idea. So what I thought I'd do was I'd go into a primary school and ask the kids and, and see what light they could shed on um, the values. Because I know they talk about them in schools. But what I wasn't prepared for was um, by me just simply sitting there and asking a big group of kids who were ages uh, six up until 12, um, I asked them, what do you guys think honesty is? Um, was that they just had this absolute urgency to talk about these things and share and uh, they were all sitting up high on their knees and all had their hands outstretched and uh, they were talking about um, I suppose specific examples of the times in their life when they had to be honest or maybe a time where they were initially dishonest, but then they changed their mind and they decided to be honest. And they were talking about why they changed their mind. Um, and a lot of that was to do with how they felt. So for example, uh, when you tell a little lie, 
you feel uncomfortable in your tummy and you feel guilty about the other person maybe, or you feel worried you're going to get in trouble. So there were lots of these things which I hadn't really thought about, but kids really think about it. And as soon as you ask them the questions, they switch on and they all want to really talk about it. So that experience really made me realize, I guess, how important it was to write this series of books, but also how to write it. What I wanted to do was to capture their voices and to capture their experiences and use a cast of characters to be able to do that. So in the book, there are five characters and they're, they're kids um, and they basically share different um, aspects of honesty or persistence. Um, and they talk about how it relates to their own life in actual real examples, like learning to ride a bike or something like that. And teaching kids values is something that I wish that I had. Um, when I was growing up because there was a lot, lots of things maybe in the school curriculum and mm. or, you know, from, um, you know, from my parents and my grandparents were never really taught it of, and, and, and had a title on what, uh, you know, values were and those types of things. And you mentioned earlier before about it gives children a really good sense of self, which is something mm. that, um, to tell you the truth, I've only really just really started to work on um, within myself is sharing something <laughs> very personal at the moment, but, you know, from an, um, showing and an understanding what empathy is and understanding, well, this is me and this is how other people feel, feel in this scenario. So to, to be able to teach kids at such a young age um, to be able to, to, to have that sense of self is, is an incredible life lesson um, and, and virtue to be able to have. Um, but, you know, because, and as you mentioned before, it is actually in the curriculum. So how do parents, when maybe they haven't had um, the, the, the lessons taught to them as well about what values actually are. How can the parent then go and speak to, to their children about what values are and how, how do they have those, those conversations? Well, what we've produced is a couple of books to start with. So these are the books. Um, so the books start off with little stories. Um, so these are the characters that I mentioned earlier and each um, scenario relates to a different aspect of the value. But right at the end, um, we actually throw the question back to the kids. So at the very end, the last bit of the story is, can you think of a time you were persistent? So it puts the question back to the children who are reading the book. Um, we also share some anecdotes from adults in the community. Uh, so these adults are all, you know, people like a paramedic or a school teacher or a scientist. And they're all people who have shared quite honestly about their own experience in relation to the values. And I thought that was a really nice way of, I suppose, normalizing the values and also normalizing growth because you talked earlier about growth. Um, and I think that's really what values come back to is that, you know, it's about personal growth and, you know, learning to be a better person, I suppose. Um, but for kids to see that adults are also on that journey, to me, that's important because, you know, adults aren't perfect either, are they? Um, but also right at the very end, we've got some actual resources for parents. Um, so these have been, these have been developed by a child and adolescent clinical psychologist called Amika Johnson. And she has um, basically put together some questions that parents can ask their kids. You know, for example, how did you feel uh, when you made a mistake? Like, how did it feel in your body? So she actually breaks it down. She talks about the importance of the value in relation to the child, uh, into relation to the child's place in society and family, all of those, those sort of things. And she also gives you practical questions you can ask your child or topics for conversation. So we make it as easy as possible. And we also have some teacher resources. Um, so they're available on my website. Um, but they're really useful too because they also break it down and they make it really practical for parents and teachers to help kids engage with the books but also beyond the books so they're actually having conversations. So this may also at the same time be a lesson for us adult, adults as we are teaching the kids too and having those moments of empathising and internalising certain situations as well as we're speaking to the kids, which I think is absolutely brilliant. And it's usually only in really, as I said earlier on, in difficult times in life that you learn these big life lessons but um, it is an opportunity to come out the other end of all of this COVID madness um, and acquired something really incredible. Now, some, I've got a, a whole heap of questions that I just wanted to just shoot through just now with you. First one is, why do you think that connectedness is more important um, than ever at the moment? 
Well, yeah, I suppose definitely. And it comes back to uh, those, uh, that idea that we want our kids to feel safe and secure. Um, and connections are really big part of that. Um, and I know in my household, um, you know, the kids are overhearing the television and the news and they're hearing the adults talking about quite sort of stressful things, I suppose. Um, and for a child to kind of get their head around that, um, I guess you want to uh, give them tools to feel resilient and feel you know, safe in their own experience. Um, so I think connections are a really big part of that. And, you know, our, I invite my kids to tell me how they're feeling. For example, you know, um, my daughter felt really confused at the beginning, you know, oh, schools are shutting and I can't see my friends. And, you know, she's really anxious about it. Um, but she really talked about how she felt in her tummy and what the actual experience was like for her. And I talked about what it was like for me. Like I was quite honest about, um, well, I'm actually feeling really stressed and I'm feeling really concerned about my career. And, you know, I was able to, the more I articulated that, um, you know, in a safe and reasonable way, the stronger our connection became and the more she was able to deal with her own stress around all of these events. And I guess it's helped us as a little family unit negotiate, you know, what's going on at the moment and cope as best we can. Yeah. And the book also talks about honesty. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about um, just briefly what it actually talks about? And do you have any tips for parents how they can actually teach their kids the virtue of honesty? Because mm, honesty is a really complicated one. It's the one I started with. And like I said earlier, the more I looked into it and thought about it, the more kind of fractured I felt about it because I was thinking, and I talked to my daughter about this, who, by the way, is 10 now. Um, and I asked her, well, you know, what do you think about honesty? And one of the first things she said to me was, yeah, but sometimes you might, your best friend might tell you a secret and they trust that you're not going to tell anyone, you know, but is that honesty or is that not honesty? So I guess it's one of those black and white things, um, oh, sorry, gray areas, because um, there's also that uh, time when a child develops theory of mind and they start to tell little fibs um, and they might tell you a little, just a little white lie sort of thing. Um, but that's all, that's a positive developmental stage for them because they're starting to understand that you have a different mind to them. Um, and then because I'm in the world of, I'm a writer, so I'm very concerned about imagination and I call myself an imagination agent, you know. So for me, imagination is really important. And of course, that's not based on truth necessarily or very rarely. Um, so it was a really complex one to tease out. But I thought what it came back to, and this is what Amika, the clinical psychologist, helped me realise, was that what it came back to was that um, the virtue of honesty in the context that we're talking about at the moment, which is uh, who are we in relation to ourselves, who are we in relation to the world and our society, is that honesty helps us, uh, it helps other people understand how we feel, for, that's one example. Um, so when, like in the case of COVID-19, when I talk about feeling stressed and what that, what that feels like in my body, that helps other people, A, understand me, help me, and also help them because it gives them a permission to talk honestly about how they feel. So I thought that was a really interesting aspect of honesty. Um, and also it helps us feel closer to each other um, and more connected, which you were talking about earlier. Um, and uh yeah so i guess it helps us feel safe and helps other people help us if we need it but it helps us help other people if that makes sense yeah so it is it's socially bonding um when we're honest and when we're vulnerable um and honesty and trustworthiness sort of sit side by side and sometimes overlap a little bit so yeah, they're, yeah interesting things to talk about and that's why we've written the books uh, i've written the books as i've written them is that they're more conversation starters rather than the be all and end all like it's not me sitting on a pedestal teaching kids how to be honest i'm not interested in that and i'm not that person um because i'm not you know uh, 
person who can do that, qualified to do that. But what I can do is I can create stories and I can allow the kids to step inside that story and experience, uh, I suppose, th or, or help them engage with those questions themselves. Yeah. And the book also lists tips for nurturing persistence in children. Could you just quickly just talk through what they are? Um, so I think once again, it's just helping kids focus on uh, the fact that, well, you need to practice. Um, things don't happen automatically. Um, not being afraid of mistakes. Um, so that mistakes are really important part of growth. Thinking about um, asking the child, uh, how did you feel when you were learning? Putting the emphasis back on the experience of learning rather than the achievement. Because that's, you know, it's the journey rather than the destination, which is really important when we're thinking about persistence. Um, and also, uh, what did you do when you made a mistake? You know, so I guess normalizing the mistake and making kids realize that it's okay to make mistakes and mistakes are part of that growing experience. Um, maybe you want to ask, you know, uh, did someone help you or what help was available to you? Because of course that helps us, you know, on our path to wherever we're trying to get to. Um, and thinking about how did you feel when you finished? Um, so for example, if a child is learning to read uh, and that might be a bit of struggle for them, maybe you could go back to a time where they did succeed with something like tying their shoelaces um, and focusing on the end outcome and how that actually felt can remind the child why it's important to go on that journey in the first place. Because at the time when you're struggling, you can easily forget that journey, you know, and you can easily forget what your what the end goal or, or the purpose of the end goal. So it, it helps kids to kind of keep on that path, I suppose, and be persistent. Yeah. And talking about paths, I mean, with parents actually sort of, you know, going down the path of teaching their children um, the, these values now, how, in your opinion, how honest do you think we should be with our kids about everything that's happening at the moment? Yeah, it's a difficult question. Um, I mean, the news is on a lot, you know, in, in the background, you know, so kids are really picking it up whether you, you know, unless you completely shelter them from it, I suppose. Um, so I know my kids at least are very aware that things are happening and they also know, of course, that they can't go to school and they know they have to stand 1.5 metres away from people in public and things like that. They can't see their friends. So I think it's important to maintain that connection and speak honestly. Uh, you obviously don't need to go into the hardcore details maybe about, you know, statistics and how many people have died and things like that. Maybe that's too much information or maybe it's too traumatising. Um, but I suppose being honest about... Um, the things that the child has within their control, you know, so I suppose explaining why we have these rules in place at the moment, um, the purpose of them for a broader society. Um, and again, going back to that, keeping that connection strong, um, how do you feel and how do I feel as an adult? And, and some adults I know possibly protect their kids from that you know from how they actually feel because they want their kids to know that well I'm a nice strong adult and I'm here to look after you and you don't have to worry but I find that by being a little bit vulnerable and by being really honest about um, my experiences that really helps my kids understand me but helps strengthen our connections and also helps inspire them to be honest about how they feel and that can help us all in turn so for example if I'm losing my temper really you know a little bit more often than usual because of the situation I can talk about why that is and I can talk about how I'm actually feeling and that can help us all yeah and last thing, thing I just wanted to ask you is like, how can we walk away from this interview today um, and build our human connections at this time which is really really important given that we're all Def home in isolation <laughs> Definitely. Um, well, a couple of things. Read to your kids. Um, books help your child develop empathy and to step inside another character's shoes for just a moment. Um, you know, gives them an experience of escapism perhaps, but also gives them experience of empathy and all of those. Empathy is one of those binding and connectedness tools we need in society. Um, and it also, that 
close contact with each other is really helpful for kids and adults, I think, at the moment. So if you've got a child at home, sit down together, spend five minutes or 10 minutes or more reading together. Also talking about the themes of the book. So my books are deliberately designed that you can talk about them. So if you are purchasing the Humankind books um, and you're reading them with your children, you know, engage with the resources at the end, ask the kids questions, encourage the kids to ask you questions. And actually what I've, what I've discovered uh, by the early readers of these books is that the parents tell me that um, they were really surprised because they actually sat down and talked for a whole hour with their kids after this about honesty. And they started to think for themselves, hang on a second, what is honesty or what is persistence and why is it important? And like me, when I started writing these books, I hadn't really thought about it in so much depth. So I think it's a really good opportunity to engage in you know, a really rich and detailed way with your children. And one last thing I'd say is that I've started a connection challenge on Instagram and social media um, and Facebook group, um, which is basically 30 different tasks you can do with your kids at home. They're all isolation friendly. So so they're all things you can do at home. They're all quite relatively easy, but they're all about strengthening those connections um, in our family unit, but also beyond our family unit, even though we can't physically see each other at the moment, we can still maintain those strong connections with our friends and beyond. Oh, wonderful tips and advice today. Thank you so much for your time. As I said, really, really grateful. If parents have got any other questions, um, whereabouts can they find you? So you can go to my website, zannylouise.com, and I've got a contact form on there. So send me an email and I'm very happy to ask any of your questions. And like I said, you can download some resources from my website as well, which go in addition to the book. So they go alongside the books. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Zanny. Take care and hopefully we'll have an opportunity for another chat again in the future. Take care. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, Rachel. Bye.